Torah Garden, speaking the absolute truth. Torah the nation. Shalom, 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 Yasharal and Yahuda. Brethren and Gentiles in the body of Hamashiach, listen, we had it again. Called to cry loud and despair not to lift up our voice like a trump in Zion. <laughs> to lift up our voice like a trump in Zion. To, yeah, to tell Yahuwah's people that they must receive the witness. They must receive the Ruach HaKadosh. They must be baptized with the water in the Ruach HaKadosh. This is where it begins. This is where the return begins. This is where the reestablishment of the kingdom begins. It begins at receiving the witness of Yahushua Hamashiach. It doesn't begin at jumping in in Torah. You got to go to the witness. You got to receive the, the cleansing. You got to be washed. Your sins got to be removed before you can move forward. Listen, and then, you know, this is the push. Yahuwah is birthing forth the nation. It's the push. You got to endure tribulation. You got to endure hardship. You got to fight the good fight of Emu. Nah, this is the push. We listen to another other than Hezekiah. Yeah, the song is entitled Push. The song is entitled Women in Travail. But the, the message is that you got to push. I don't own the rights to this music. It's the push. Yahweh, in the name of Yahushua Mashiach, I pray that you would take the reins of my lips and the reins of my tongue and reign. Yahweh, that I would cause no one to stumble to be turned out of way to come up the lane, but that your word would be a lamp unto their feet, a light unto their pathway. Yahweh, that the entrance of thy word would give them light, it would give understanding to the simple, that a young man's ways is to be cleansed by taking heed to the word. Now, Yahuwah, you have put your Ruach HaKadosh in me, and you have caused me to go forth in this word. You have called me to, as your prophet, to cry loud and to spare not and to lift up my voice like a trump. Yahuwah, I am declaring your word, believing you by faith in Emunah for a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing of the Ruach HaKadosh. For those who are in this witness, those that are pushing their way in, those that are being birthed, those who are coming into this 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 witness and being established until the end. Yahuwah, in the name of Yahushua Mashiach, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Yahuwah, my strength and my redeemer. Listen. We in a push. It's the push. It's travail. It's travail. It's birth pains. Listen, man of y'all, woman of y'all, right? I remember when my children were born, right? Um, I was in the room where they was birthed in the hospital. I was there holding on to my wife's hand, right? As she was in travail and as she pushed. Now, right, my wife got an epidural, right, at the time. I'm sorry, not my wife current, but the, the mother of my children, right? She she had an epidural, right? So what it did was they gave it a shot that kind of deadened it. So it would kind of like cause the pain to subside, right? So they gave her the epidural early when my son was born. And, uh, you know, it got to the point where, you know, she was dilating, but she wasn't dilating as fast as they like, right? She, and then finally, when she started dilating, you know, the, the epidural started to wear off. <laughs> so she's like, yo, doc, I can feel it, man. You know, I got to, I can feel this. I need another shot. And doc said, no, can't have another shot. <laughs> got pushed. You got to push, right? 
So she was holding my hand. She was squeezing my hand, right? And, uh, you know, my son crowns. His head starts to come out. She's like, ah, you know, she's bearing down, you know, pushing, right? And I, and I was so amazed as I watched my son come through the birth canal, right? That exit out of her womb, right? How the doctor maneuvered him and positioned him so he could come out easier. But it was a push, right? It was travail. It was painful, right? But in the midst of the pain, right, it was obvious that she was in travail, right? But once he came forth and the doctor placed him on her belly, right? And I'm looking at him in amazement, right? She was in, in pain no more, right? It was like, she got past the birth. She got past pushing out this, 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 this young infant, right? From her womb, right? Having him delivered up unto her, right? Doing that process, she was not feeling it. <laughs> you know, squeezing my hand, angry, <laughs> right? S pushing, though, the point where he was birthed forth. Yasharal and Yahuda. Some of us have been birthed, but we in the push because we got to come forth as a nation. See, because some of us have been born again already of the water and the Ruach HaKadosh. We have accepted the blood, the atonement of Yahuwah, and we have been given this, this cleansing, this righteousness that comes through faith and believing in Yahushua's sacrifice, right? We've come forth. Right? But we still push it. We're pushing for our brethren that still are trying to be birthed. And we're pushing as a collective nation of people that's going to be gathered in Yahuwah. Yahusha. Right? But I've been birthed already. I've been born again. I understand where I'm at. I know what I'm expecting. Right? I know that tribulation is going to come. Tribulation works and it's an ally, right? But it's the push, right? And you know, in this awakening, we think that the awakening has pushed us in. But the awakening just gave you an understanding that you have a bloodline that is associated with a group of people, which were Yahuwah's people, right? Right? But it's not until you accept the quickening that you become the people of Yahuwah that is going to enter into the kingdom of Yahuwah, right? You can, you can be his people by blood, go over to the continent, right? And still not be his people. Because his people are they which are called by his name. They that humbled, have humbled themselves and prayed. And have seeked his face and has turned from their wicked ways. That's faith in Hamashiach. That's being born again. Of the water and the Ruach HaKadosh. That's receiving the atoning blood that will deliver and cleanse you. We in a push. You who have told me to cry out and spare not. We in a push. To lift up my voice like a trumpet Zion. See, I, my message is clear. I got to tell you that it's necessary for you to receive Yahuwah's Ruach. That you must be born again of the water and of the Ruach HaKadosh. You must receive Yahuwah's blood 
his water, and the Ruach HaGadesh. You must bear the witness of Yahuwah. If you, if, 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 if you haven't done that, then you know, you know, the very fact that Yahuwah has got me crying loud and sparing not is because he is long-suffering, right? The bridegroom is yet tarrying, right? Yet tarrying. Yahoo is yet giving opportunity for you to be birthed into this witness. It's about to push. It's about to push. And you know, I had to, I, I, I was I was there when all my children were born. Yeah, all three of them. In the hospital, holding her hand, watching these children come forth. Right? I understand what the travail looks like. I understand what the push looks like. I understand why we're in this yet being pushed, birthed. There is a rejoicing and a victory that's going to come at the gathering and the restoration of his people. It's a joy. But I don't stop pushing. I know what the expectation is in the end. But I don't start pushing. I don't stop pushing. I don't start fasting. I don't stop praying. I don't stop uh, 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 being a vessel for Yahuwah to reach the brethren. Because this is the push. This is the push. We are in the wisdom of Shlomo, right? And we're in the 13th chapter, right? Again, we understand that Shlomo, when he speaks of the power, he speaks of her, he speaks of wisdom, he is speaking of Yahuwah's Ruach that he has unto himself as a young man. He recognized his inability to lead the people of you. He knew that he, he, pos he, he lacked the skill set to be the king. You know, you, 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 you can be made the king, but you don't necessarily have the skill set. You don't have the judgment. You don't know how to make the right decision. You don't even know who to lean on for uh, support and guidance. Right? You king though. But some will recognize that. You know, like, like, you know, I sought wisdom. But I knew that what I needed was seated next to you. I knew that. In order for me to do the thing that I needed to do in the earth, I had to have his Ruach HaKadosh. The Ruach HaKadosh of wisdom, and I had to have the Ruach HaKadosh of knowledge. I had to have what I needed to make the proper judgment, to render the proper justice, to do that which pleases a Yahuwah Alua. So, what we have here in the wisdom of Solomon is his his understanding of how the Ruach HaKadosh of wisdom and power of Yahuwah is uh, manifested, what it does, um, what it gives, what it provides, right? In order to understand anything that is in the original covenant and the Basura, right? That which was recorded after Yusha Mashiach, which was recorded after the apostles, right? Right? Right. All of that was recorded and inspired by the Ruach. Right? You gotta understand this. See, if you don't have the Ruach Akadesh, you're gonna try to figure out stuff on your own and come up with your own conclusions that seem logical. 
But the wisdom of man is foolishness to you. The wisdom of man is foolishness to you. But see, the, the wisdom that's from the Ruach HaKadosh, that's, that's revelation. That's revelatory. That, that's a revealing. Right? That, that, that exposes the secret and the hidden things. See, the, the Ruach of Yahuwah makes clarity of dark sayings. It, it brings understandings when a parable is read or when a proverb is spoken. The Ruach HaKadosh, right? Because it's Yahuwah's wisdom. Now, and in order to understand Yahuwah, you have to have Yahuwah's Ruach HaKadosh. You, in order to understand what he's saying from Genesis to Revelation, you have to have you as Ruach HaKadosh. You have to have Yahuwah's Ruach HaKadosh to understand any of this. Without Yahuwah's Ruach HaKadosh, there is no understanding, right? Yahuwah is not going to reveal it to you, right? Without his Ruach HaKadosh. Got to understand that this Besorah and this Torah is Ruach. It's a history, but it has hidden riches and wisdom that is only discernible by having received you as Ruach HaKadosh. So, Shlomo starts out this 12th chapter, I mean the 13th chapter, excuse me, the first verse. By saying, surely vain are all men by nature. By nature. Man is vain because man is a product of Adam and Adam was fallen. And because of Adam, sin passed on all, all mankind. Therefore, everything that man does in his naturalness is vanity. It's not Ruach. See now, everything that Adam and Hava did as a result of, um, of, of being a part of Yahuwah's Ruach creation, right? Before they fell and entered into deceit and the Ruach HaKadosh fleed, right? At the point where they had the Ruach HaKadosh, there was nothing vain about them. Their their imagination was not remotely influenced by vanity. They were locked in to the wisdom of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah gave him his Ruach HaKadosh, and they had everything they needed to get the job done. But Yahuwah said, listen, I got to put this tree in the midst of the garden. Because this tree represents good and evil, but it represents free choice. I'm I'm giving you the I'm giving you the commandment not to eat of the tree, but see you have the choice to obey me or disobey me. Right? It became vanity for them after they partook. They violated the Torah of Yahuwah. Yahuwah, Ruach will flee to sin. Yahuwah's, Yahuwah's Ruach will flee sin. Adam and, and Adam and Hava, you know, the Ruach are going to flee them. The benefits that came with the Ruach, the existence in the garden, the wisdom to name all creatures, the, the certainty that came with having Yahuwah Lul's witness Ruach on the inside of them and being in the midst of his presence was gone. Surely, vain are all men by nature. The heart of man is desperately wicked. It's vain. Worthless. Vanity. Let's look at this. Definition of the word vain. It 
having or showing an excessive high opinion of oneself's ability or worth. Flattery. Right? 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 Flattery. Right? Surely man, surely vain are all men in nature. Right? They're their center. Alua Yahu is not their center. Right? Vain. Conceit. Narcissist. Self-loving. Right? Loving of oneself. Right? Futile. Worthless. Producing no results. Man in of itself is not going to produce any results. Listen, if the truth be told, man wouldn't have come as far as he has come had it not been Hasatan's manipulation. Man would have never come up with weapons, would have never come up with enchantments. Man would have never come up with none of that stuff had it not been for the 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 fallen angel's influence. Listen, we worthless. <laughs> we still be in the stone ages. If it had not been for Hasatan's influence and if it had not been for Yahuwah's righteousness in men and men that he has chosen to put his Ruach and who was a, he has established as his people, right? Because they have Yahuwah's Ruach and they lead the people in reference to the Ruach that Yahuwah has given, right? And if you give heed to the word, then there is benefits and blessing, right? There's wisdom, understanding, there's clarity because you give heed to the word of Yahuwah. You obey Yahuwah. What is the truth be told? We vain, worthless, right? No purpose. Listen. Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of Yahuwah. Vain. Everything you do is vain. Right? You who are ignorant of Yahuwah's righteous power, his ruachal power, his ruachal wisdom of the word of his power. Right? Right? You're ignorant. You're vain. You're worthless. Those who are ignorant of Yahuwah are worthless. And could not, and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is. You couldn't even know Yahuwah in your ignorance. Listen, you would not even, in your ignorance of Yahuwah, know the good things that are of or ascribed to Yahuwah. You, you, you will ascribe these things to other things. Right? You're going to turn those things into deities because you're ignorant. Because the sun comes up and it brings heat, right? Right? That heat and that sun is a benefit to you. So because you're ignorant and you don't know Yahuwah, you worship the sun. Because left to yourself without Yahuwah, you are ignorant. You ain't going to do nothing productive. And could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is. You, you, you can't understand that 
the sons has been supplied by Yahuwah, and Yahuwah should be praised for what he has done in giving you the son, because you ignorant. You're going to look at the son, and you're going to worship the son. Yeah. And then, when it rains, right, and you see the benefit of the rain, you're not going to understand the rain has come from Yahuwah, who has come to replenish the earth due to what the sun has taken, right, and caused to be dried up or lost or evaporated or however you want to look at it, right? right? You ain't going to look at Yahuwah. You're going to look at the rain now. The storm gods. Because you're vain. Because you're ignorant. Right? Without your without the knowledge of you, you're worthless. You're not gonna be able to identify the things for which Yahuwah has made, and he is to be glorified because of those things. You, you, you ain't gonna do that because you're vain. Right? Neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master. They didn't acknowledge you. You were made the heavens and the earth. Earth was our form of void and darkness was a, upon the face of the deep and the Ruach HaKadosh moved upon the waters. And Yahuwah said something and Yahushua the word took that and brought it to pass with him and the Ruach HaKadosh. They didn't, they don't, they don't understand, they don't recognize, they don't, they don't recognize, they don't, don't, they don't acknowledge Yahuwah as the source. See, Shlomo, Shlomo understands the power of Yahuwah by the Ruach, I guess, the wisdom and knowledge. He's discerning and bringing understanding to the thought process of men who don't know you who who are not familiar or acquainted with you who right they look at things they see things but they don't ascribe them to the all powerful you was avo he says but deem either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent waters or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world. There you go. Right? They are vain in their imaginations. Right? Look at this. Where is it? Let me see something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, it's not it. It's, um, Uh, let me see. Okay. He says, in Romans chapter 1, right? Verse. Let's start at. Let's start at the 18th verse. For the wrath of Alua is revealed... From the Shamaim against all ungodliness, vanity, vainness, and unrighteousness of men, less than themselves, men are worthless, right? Who hold the truth in unrighteousness, right? 
Right. They take the truth of Yahuwah and make it unrighteous. Right? Right? He said, because that which may be known of Alua is manifested in them. Right? For Alua hath shown it unto them. You know, manifested everything that is made by the working of his hands. He demonstrated it. But they were vain. Right? Right? He says, Because that which may be known of Alua was is manifested in them, for Alua hath shown unto them, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. He's made manifested the things that are world of the world that are made. They're clearly seen. Right? Being understood by the things that are made. You can understand it by the things that are made. The things that are seen can be understood by the things that are made. Right? His eternal power. And Godhead. So Yahuwah, the Ruach, Kakadesh, Yahusha are the eternal Godhead. And they were, right? The beginning of creation. It's manifested. Right? Manifested. Clearly seen. Right? So that they are without excuse. I have no excuse. Right? But listen, but listen, but listen. Because that when they knew Alua, they glorified not as Alua, neither were thankful, but became vain. Yeah. Worthless. Synonyms. Futile. Or similar words. Futile. Useless. Pointless. Worthless, to no purpose, right? Having no meaning or likelihood of fulfillment. That's the definition, English definition for the word vain. Having a show of excessively high opinion of one's appearance, ability, and worth. They became vain. They thought that they knew more than Yahuwah Lua. They thought that they understood more than the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKadosh. Or the Father, the Word, and the Ruach HaKadosh. They thought that they knew more. They didn't want to retain Yahuwah. They didn't want to, to take Yahuwah unto themselves and establish him as Alua, Yahuwah of all. They did not want to recognize him as the most high. But they became vain in their imagination. They thought they knew more. They became, they thought more highly of themselves than they ought to have. And, and you know, and, and, and the falling angels had a lot to do with that. Because, you know, they passed on knowledge to men. And, you know, knowledge puffs up. Knowledge will have you thinking more of yourself than you ought to think. But there's nothing to say that that knowledge that you have received is ruachal. But that that knowledge will cause you to be puffed up. He says, he says, he says in Romans, he says, because when they knew Alua, they glorified not as Alua. They, 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 didn't, they didn't give him the reverential honor as the creator of all things that he deserved. Right? Neither were they thankful. They weren't thankful at the, the provisions that Yahuwah had made. The things that he had made available for their consumption, for their uh, uh, security and safety. They, they, didn't, they, didn't rec they didn't accept that. They didn't recognize that. Right? 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 
He says, but became vain, worthless. They thought more highly of themselves than they ought to think in their own self-talk. Their imaginations, you know, they muttered over, they self-talked, they entertained what Hasatan had put into their thoughts. And the more they entertained those, those thoughts, the more they turned it inward and became vain, right? They became vain, right? They became, they began to have an excessively high opinion of their self. Right? The high opinion of themselves took the reverence, the glory, the honor from Yahuwah and placed it on themselves and on the things that Yahuwah had created. Yeah, thank you. Come on, let's go. Romans. Let's go Romans. Romans. We go, we go Romans, right? He said, but became vain in their imagination. Right? Their self talk. Right, in the in in the conversations that they had entertained with uh, 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 demonic entities that was giving them seeds, sowing thoughts. Listen, what do you think? What do, these, these scientists, these science, vanity, vexation. Scientists. You know, I was listening to We On, We 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 On, We On News, right? And how the scientists have taken the heart of a pig and have did a human transplant in it. Evidently, this pig, this unclean pig heart, right, is supposed to do something that is groundbreaking. I don't know if it's dementia or something. But anyway, it's something groundbreaking. Right? It's, it's, it's going to be groundbreaking for a transplant and organ transplants. Right? Because cause, cause, cause the body won't reject the pig. Vanity. They became vain in their imagination. Because they think they know. See, and Hasatan to keep feeding them. Yeah, yeah, follow this line of thinking. Yeah, go this way of thinking, and it's going to work. And you, they just entertain it. Yeah, they listen to Ruachs. They listen to evil Ruachs. They did the same thing that the angels did when he came, and they presented themselves to the sons of men, wanting the daughters of men. They entertained them, right? They gave them what they needed in an exchange. That's what they did. They do the same thing now. There's nothing new under the sun. These demons exchange knowledge, technologies. They exchange that for service. Because, you know, demons want to advance the system so that it, it, will, be, it will be pliable. It'll be... It'll be, it'll be, it'll be ready for the manifestation of the beast, that wicked one. Vain. Vain. You should almost say vanity of vanity. He says in Ecclesiastics 1 and 2, Shlomo. Now, this is Shlomo that does not have the Ruach HaKadosh no more. This is Shlomo that has allowed himself to entertain madness and folly. See, and this is important because you need to understand what that looks like. When you're in a place of rightness and have you who is Ruach HaKadosh and then all of a sudden you decide to entertain madness and folly. 
you go astray. What that becomes is vanity of vanities. Say if the preacher, all vanity of vanity, all is vanity. All is vanity. What profit have a man of all his labors which he do under the sun? This is because you have moved from the ruach of wisdom and knowledge into your own vanity, your own way of thinking and processing, and you don't even realize that the ruach is not with you. Romans. He says, he says, he says. Because that when they knew not Alua, they glorified him not as Alua, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination and their hearts, their foolish hearts, foolish hearts. See, Snowman said, I gave myself to know madness and folly. He says, I commune with my heart. I commune with my heart. I had a reasonable discussion with my heart. And I was, I, I was pleased with the wisdom and the knowledge that I had. But you know what? My heart wanted also to pursue madness and folly. I became fool. My foolish heart was darkened. So much so that, you know, I, 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 I violated Torah. Yeah. I multiplied wives. I married strangers of the other nations. Right? I allowed them to come in and bring their gods. Their gods shared a space in the temple of Yahuwah. Yeah, their gods were introduced to the city of Jerusalem and they found a place in the city gates. And also, too, you know, I built groves for them. You know, high places. You know, for them to sacrifice their children, you know, because that's what they did. I let their priest come in and do their priestly thing. I became vain in my imagination and my heart became darkened. And I realized it was vanity and vexation. It's all vanity. I'm a preacher. I'm declaring that it's vanity. There's no profit in this. It's vanity. He says there's no profit in the man. He said, listen, 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 listen. Listen, he says, what profit hath the man of all his labors which he taken under the sun? That sounds like a man who does not have you as ruach. Because a man who 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 obeys you who is ruach, who, who really a man who walks in you who is statutes and his Torah, right, and keeps his commandments, Yahuwah promises him blessings. Blessing shall thy be in the city, blessed shall thy be in the field. That should be the fruit of thy body, fresh fruit of the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of thy ground, increase of thy kind, and the fox of thy sheep. Blessed shall it be without goest in, and blessed shall it be without goest out. That's the reward of righteousness. Right? Foolish vanity, vanity is foolishness. His heart had become darkened. And and you know what? He understood this in the Ruach of Wisdom, but lost it when he became vain. He, he forgot this. Right? He gave himself over eventually to strange women, to concubines fathering kids not of the covenant they ain't children of you they're not the children of the covenant he 
he says in Romans 1 and 21, and their foolish hearts was darkened, right? Professing themselves to be wise, we scientists. The wisest minds of the world coming together to come up with a vaccine. We need to trust our scientists. <laughs> Professing themselves to be wise. They're but fools. Because see, they don't have the wisdom of you. They don't have the wisdom of you. They don't have the Ruach of you or the Ruach of wisdom, the Ruach of understanding, the Ruach of counsel, the Ruach of might, the Ruach of knowledge, the fear of Yahweh. They don't have that. Their hearts are darkened. So they have a motive, a motive of destruction, right? Have a motive of a destruction whose implementation has everything to do with a mag scene. Uh, a method of controlling population. They will starve you out. Cause your economy to crash. Reduce the numbers. Vain in their knowledge. They're foolish. He says... And changing the glory of the incorruptible Alua unto the images made like unto corruptible man. They made idols. They made idols of men. Then they made idols of beasts and four footed beasts. They changed the glory of the incorruptible Alua. They put it on their corruptible level because they're 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 born in sin and shaping in iniquity. Everything they're gonna do is gonna be motivated by their corrupt nature. Everything that they do is going to be driven by their corrupt nature, right? They change the glory of an incorruptible lure. Now listen, listen. You you can never change your who's glory. But what they did is they put it on their level of corruption. It changed. Right? Into an image made like unto corruptible man. Got these statutes of, of men and busts of people. We are constantly called to remember these things. Idols, right. and they made them of birds. The eagle, the American eagle, the bald eagle, the symbol of freedom and strength. Four-footed beast and creeping things. Four-footed beast, worshiping cows. Won't kill a cow, raise a cow, to worship a cow. Won't eat a cow, worship a cow. Fools. He says, wherefore Lua also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, dishonored their bone bodies between them. Okay, we know where that's going. But Shlomo says it here. He says, surely vain are all men. In the wisdom of Solomon in the 13th chapter. Right? He says, now. But deeming either fire, deeming either fire or wind or swift air or the circles of stars or violent waters or lights of heavens to be held. Their foolish hearts were darkened. 
which govern the world. Now, understanding that Yahuwah is the source of the existence of things. He has established the perpetual order of things. But, they, you know, they scientists. <laughs> They're fools. They have become vain in their imaginations, their self-talk, house of town, the demonic influences that has caused them to see and think and, and to function a certain way. He said, with whose beauty if they, being delighted, took them to be their gods, let them know how much better Yahuwah is, Yahuwah of them is. He said, listen, even, even if, you, if you selected these things because of their beauty, listen, Yahuwah created them. He's more beautiful. He's more splendid. He's more awe-inspiring. Right? He's the creator. He's not the creation. He's the architect. Excuse me. For the first author of beauty hath created them. You. You who deserves all the glory. Look, you are. May I never, in the name of Yahushua Mashiach, elevate anyone or anything above you, neither exalting the flesh of men or flesh of woman before you. For you are Yahuwah Zavaol, you are Yahuwah of the host, you are Yahuwah of the armies. You created everything. You, the eternal Godhead, Yahushua, the Ruach HaKadosh, you did it all. And I give him praise. Listen. But if they were astonished at their power and virtue. Let them understand by them how much mightier he is that made them. You're astonished by the power of the sun. You're astonished by the force of the waves and how the wind in a tornado or a cyclone comes in and just... It's amazing and powerful how you see a water spout over the ocean just form. And how in a matter of minutes the storm comes in and it just, it's powerful and awesome. Consider he who made it. Consider him who made it, who in a matter of minutes can send down the rain torrentially, and in a matter of hours flood cities. <laughs> what an awesome sight, what an awesome allure. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Listen, listen, listen. But if they were astonished at their power and virtue, right? These things, right? Let them understand by them how much mightier he, Yahuwah, is that made them. For by the greatness and beauty of the creature proportionably, proportionably, Personally, the maker of them is seen. It's a reflection of Yahuwah's beauty. It's a reflection of Yahuwah's strength. 
It's a reflection of Yahuwah's power. Right? Because he made it all. By the word of his power. He says, For yet, for this, they are the less to be blamed. Yeah, it's not the stars and the sun and the moon and the wind. It's not their fault that you are vain. <laughs> and make them the object of your worship. It's not their fault, right? For they pre-adventure error, seeking Alua and desires of him. Listen. The creation know who they serve. They look to him. They look to please him. Yahuwah established an order. They don't just jump out of the order. Sun rises east and sets in the west. Right? It's an order. They don't change it up because they want to change it up. They glorify you. They do the things that please the Lord. Because they desire to please you. The only thing they don't desire to please you is man. Unregenerated, un, uh, uh, un, un, um, witness having, <laughs> un being born again, man. He's the only one that doesn't desire to do what pleases you. And of course, the fallen Malachim, which he created. He says, for being converse, conversant in his works, they each search him diligently. They're going to do what you will want them to do diligently. They ain't going to break rank. They ain't going to spin off and do what they want to do. And believe their sight. Because the things are beautiful that are seen. The order recognizes Yahuwah's order. And reverences Yahuwah's order. Those who love Yahuwah recognizes his order and desires to be consistent in his order seeks to do the things that pleases you who right by for being conversant of his works they search him diligently they doing what you who wants them to do and they constantly doing it in searching in search of his his approval right and believing their sights believe their their sight because the things are beautiful that are seen how be it neither are they to be pardoned everybody has to do what Yahuwah who has instructed them to do you got to fall in line with the order. Right? There's no reprieve. You can't decide to do something that you want to do. There's no parting for misconduct in Yahuwah's order. There's no forgiveness in the order that you was established if something in the order decided they wanted to do something different. The sun decided he didn't want to shine because it didn't want to shine. There's no pardon for that. There's, there's no forgiveness for that. Rebellion. There's no forgiveness for rebellion in the order of you. 
That's why the Hasatan and the devils and demons, there's, there's no pardon. They were established for an order. They violated that order. There's no pardon. He says, For if they were able to know so much that they could aim at the world, how would they not sooner find out a uh, Yahuwah thereof? I mean, you know, he's talking about, he's all talking about the people who are vain. Because the discussion remains the same. It's about vanity. It's about man and his vanity. And his under his failure to understand Yahuwah's uh, supremacy. They fail to understand Yahuwah's power. Right. They think they know. They become vain in their imagination. Right. And if they were able to know so much and they could aim at the world, how did, how did they not sooner find out Adonai Yahuwah thereof? Yahuwah, Adonai thereof. But miserably are they and in dead things is their hope. The man that is vain. The woman that is vain. Right? Miserable. Ecclesiastes 1 and 2. Vanity of vanity. Saith the preacher. All is vanity. Vanity. What profit hath the man of his labors? He work in vain, which he taketh under his son. One generation passes away, and another one cometh, and the earth abides forever. It's vain. All we doing is wasting time here in the earth. Where it's vanity. There's no benefit. Sounds like, but miserable are they. And in dead things is their hope. Let's go ahead and curse you who and die. Who calls them a Luke? Who calls them gods? Elohim. Which are the works of man hands, gold and silver, and sheweth art, and resembles of beasts and of stones, of goods, of nothing. The works of an ancient hand. These, these things that you attribute as gods. As elves. He says. Now a carpenter. That fell of timber. After he is sawn down a tree. Meet for the purpose. And taking off all the bark skillfully round about, and had wrought it handsomely, and made a vessel thereof fit for the service of man's life. And after spending the refuge of his work to dress his meat, haveth filled himself. And taking the very refuge among those which serve to no use. Now you done cut a tree down. You done took the the, the bark off. You done you done you done began to make your images. You began to craft. Your, 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 your elves, right? 
and taking the very refuge among those which serve to no use, being a cooked piece of wood full of knots, hath carved it diligently when he has nothing else to do. You got nothing else to do? So he carving images. He making, he making idols, right? And formed it by the skills of his understanding and fashioned it to be the image of a man. He made this thing from a tree. He had nothing better to do. So you use your skills to carve something that resembles a man, right? He says, or made it like some vile beast, right? Laying, oh, laying it over with vermin and with paint color in red and covering every spot therewith. You did this. You made it in a fashion that pleased you. You had the power to carve this, to make this, right? To paint it, to fashion it in the way that you want to, whether it's a statue of a man or a beast or whatever it is, or a half man beast or whatever, a half animal, half man, breasted, balfamit, whatever. You made it with your hand, right? And when he made a convenient room for it, you gave it its own place. Set it on, set it on, set it in a wall and made it fast with iron. So you took this idol, you put it in a place in the wall, in a room, a dedicated place and fixed it so it wouldn't move. Right? You did it. It didn't do this on its own. It didn't walk in, speak to you after having been fashioned and tell you to put me up here in this designated place and I am going to be the object of your worship. <laughs> didn't do that. It didn't happen like that. Right? He says, for he proved, for he provided for it that it may not fall. Can't even stand up on his own. Foolish. Vanity. Vain. For because that they knew Allure, they glorified not as Allure, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination. Hasatan plants the seed. You entertain the seed, or demons plant the seed. And you entertain the seed, and you fashion based on what was sown in your imagination, your thoughts. And your foolish madness and folly heart became darkened. You, you think you're wise because you're skillful to do this 
craft, this carving, or this chiseling, whatever it may be. Right? You're skilled. You, you got skills. You're wise in your own eyes, but just a fool. Just a fool. You vain. Because you're going to change, Romans 1 and 23, the glory of the incorruptible Alua into an image made like unto man. And to beast, four footed beast and creeping things. See, you can tell that that Shaul studied Torah. He studied the wisdom of Solomon. Shlomo. That's what Shlomo said. <laughs> Listen. The renewed covenant has everything to do with Yahusha Hamashiach, the mediator of a better covenant, because he is that high priest forever that is at the order of Melchizedek that replaced the Aaron priesthood that Yahuwah said that was going to come to an end. He told Levi this. He told, he, he told, uh, 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 uh. Uh, Eli and Phineas, the sons of Eli, and like, it's come to an end. Shaul said it passed away. It decayed, the priesthood. But see, Yahushua is that high priest forever. The renewed covenant is the original covenant. It's just renewed because of the sacrifice of this high priest that Yahuwah has made forever after you order Melchizedek. It's renewed because it only going to require one sacrifice and that's Yahushua's blood. There's no more all these sacrifices no more. And your high priests, they gone. They, they stuck on stupid. Right? And Yahuwah is that high priest that Yahuwah has put into the office. Yahushua was the only one that can go into the holies of holies. The other temples were defiled. Yahushua could go into the holies of holies with his own blood because he was the lamb of Yahuwah that taketh away the sins of the earth. Listen, there's nothing new under the sun. Shaul was quoting from the wisdom of Solomon and other places. It's obvious. It's Torah. He says, for he provided for it that he might not fall, knowing that it was unable to help itself. <laughs> Can't help itself. It's an idol. It's a god. But I got to prop it up. If it don't pop it up, it'll fall over. <laughs> and I can't be having my idol falling. Because <laughs> if you fall over, right, you can't be able to do that. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. He says, for he provided for it and that it might not fall knowing that it was unable to help itself for it is an image and have has no need of help <laughs> it's an image it, it has no life it you know it don't need no help because all and the only purpose it's going to serve is, is 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 a table weight because <laughs> they didn't have paper then it's just weight on the table though. <laughs> <laughs> a paperweight right he says then maketh he prayers for his goods for his wife and children and is not ashamed to speak of that which haveth no life
For health he calleth upon it, that which is weak. For life prayeth to that which is dead. For aid humbly beseeching that which have the least means of help. And for a good journey he asked of that which cannot set his foot forward. <laughs> Uh, listen, give glory to Yah. Give glory to Yah. Give glory to Yah, saints. Give glory to Yah. Sing praise to his name. Hallelujah. Sing praise to his name. Sing praise to his name. Hallelujah. Sing praise to his name. Give glory to Yah. Give glory to Yah. Give glory to Yah. Thank you. Give glory to Yah. Sing praise to his name. Hallelujah. Sing praise to his name. Sing praise to his name. Hallelujah. Sing praise to his name. He who has created all things. He who has all power in the Shamaim and the Arets. He who has purchased our Yeshua. He who has sprinkled us with clean water and given us his Ruach HaKadosh. He who has given us the witness of Yahushua HaMashiach. Sing praise to his name. And for gaining and getting, and for good success of his hand, ask this ability to do of him that is most unable to do anything. Give glory to Yah, saints. Give glory to Yah. Give glory to Yah, saints. Give glory to Yah. Sing praise to his name, hallelujah. Sing praise to his name. Sing praise to his name, hallelujah. Sing praise to his name. Man of Yah, woman of Yah, the wisdom of Solomon. 13th chapter, the first through the 19th verse. Yahuwah is great. He is worthy of praise. And only the foolish, those who don't have the witness of Yahushua HaMashiach, those who have not received the water and the blood who operate apart from the witness are vain because they have not identified and recognized Yah's salvation. Shlomo opens up by saying, Surely vain are all men by nature. Your nature is fallen. Your nature needs to be redeemed. You need a rebirth. And only who are ignorant of Alua and those that cannot out of a good conscience, good things, out of good things that are seen 
No, that is. Only people who have received Yahuwah's righteous witness is going to know Yahuwah. Because they're going to have his nature. Because, beloved, now we the sons of Yahuwah, Lua. And it does not yet appear, but we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and we will have his nature. We've received the Ruach HaKadosh. We have it in measure. We have the earnest. It is our seal. But it's what we need to get the job done. Man of Yah, woman of Yah, give glory to Yahuwah. Yahweh, I give you praise for the words that you've given me to give to them. And I pray that they would receive them in Imuna, that they would be strengthened by power and by might, and that this word would be alive in them. Yahuwah, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. Again, Yahuwah, make alive your word in them. In the name of Yahushua Mashiach, quicken them. And I give you praise. Man of Yah, woman of Yah, that's it for today. One, one, man of Yah called the greatness. Woman of Yahuwah called the greatness. Beautifully and wonderfully made today. You has favored you. Yes, sir. Give glory to Yah, saints. Give glory to Yah, listen. Give glory to Yah, saints. Give glory to Yah. Sing praise to his name, hallelujah. Sing praise to his name. Sing praise to his name, hallelujah. Sing praise to his name. Give glory to Yah, saints. With that I say, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Be blessed. Torah Garden, speaking the absolute truth. Torah Nation.